So, would you like to know why I ripped out my dash? Well, I figure you all want to know how to change your PCM. Uh, you know, what runs the computer. Just in case you're crazy enough that you're a parts changer and you think you have to change that to fix your problem because it wasn't fixed when you changed your O2 sensor. I had another huzzah moment. Okay, so since I've got to get this reattached to the O2 sensor, I couldn't, I kept filling around and filling around, couldn't find where to find it. And I finally took out my handy way to deal with upholstery. I know, I know, I need to invest 20 bucks in the, the plastic ones. But I'm really careful, my customers' cars stay pretty, so hey, who can complain? Well, this is the wiring that I've been trying to get for so long. Actually, I haven't tried it at all because my missions were like due like a year later. But <laughs> I only have six months left. So I got to get it done. Anyway, I need to get those married up and get those wires uh, attached because I'm sure the connector's ripped off. But I'm going to splice it in. Once I splice it, I'll never have to deal with this again. Oh, I'm kidding. These are actually probably easier. But I'm cheap. The O2 sensor is original to the car from 180,000 miles ago. I promise you it can still monitor the catalytic converter effectively. Got it? So don't change your PCM. If you need a catalytic converter, get a catalytic converter. If you... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing about why I told you I opened this. Alright, anyway. I'll get back to you in a second. Alright, so you really should have your car off while working around the PCM. Uh, further note of electrical safety is you can unplug the negative battery terminal. But honestly, I'm not going to play within the wiring, so all these precautions are probably for naught. I'm not going to bother. Um, anyway, you got to get this little protective guy off. Just pop him off with one of these. Be careful. You uh, want to kill the gnats as you go or the, the blood suckers but when you've got this little guy it'll make it easy to pull that off that makes it so that you can adjust where the lever is with the car on engine off um, Terran's dash apart is really fairly complicated but it's simple at the same time okay when you first start off you don't see anywhere you can remove anything. Take a look. I'll have all my dash out at this point. And the first thing you start with is this guy. Sorry, I travel a lot. Now I have kids, so it makes it even worse. Uh, you got two bolts you can undo there. There's two bolts on each side of this. You'll probably recognize this as what the emergency brake goes through. All right. Now, in order to pull that guy off, you have to be strong enough to get the emergency brake way back. Hold on just a second. I need two hands for this. Okay. Simultaneously pressing this and this, you can get all this, this all the way back, and that will allow clearance for the piece that goes over here to come up. That's this big guy right here, okay? He's the one that's got my stereo in there. These are the bolts that I showed you off the side here. They hold that on as well. You've got a lot of interior pieces to take off. A couple nuts in here. Well, they go back and forth between bolts and screwdriver and screw screws. So you got your screws up in here. Okay. I try to put bolts away as I go so I could have a chance at knowing where things go. I'll be frank, I'm pretty lost at this point. You got your uh, piece that goes in front of your stereo. I'm not sure if that'll be the same if you still have the original stereo. Uh, you got this piece that's just kind of a filler in there. Um, I have no idea where it goes anymore. <laughs> uh, hopefully I can figure that out as it goes back together. Uh, I meant to make a video sooner so that my memory wouldn't be lost. Now this guy, he pretty much just pops in. He's got two pop-ins right up here. Uh, this wiring 
Sorry, I've been trying to kill this bloodsucker the whole time, too. Um, he's got some wiring that actually has to work up and over that gray piece I was showing you that's in my back seat. But it took a while for a part to come in, so I did this, so at least I still have the use of my charger and things like that. Because this is your power for your cigarette lighter. Uh, if you'll notice, a lot of things are just held in by tabs. And it does take some prying and some effort. You gotta reveal some pieces, you gotta pull this back in order to get to a screw hole right there. There's one down here, which I have reinstalled. Let's see if I can get you an angle on that. Temporarily, just so I don't have as much quite as much vibration. That exhaust rattle I have, it's still there, and that's exasperated by my driving around with my dash apart. This guy's in. I decided to go super, super cheap for a change. Um, I bought one of those $20 eBay oxygen sensors, something that I would never, ever do. Okay. Except that I really. Even if the oxygen sensor doesn't work, I don't care. Because all I really need is what's in this package. Hold on just a second, I'll get it out. Because you, you see what got ripped out is the harness. It got ripped out right here. And I bought some splicers that I could just splice it in. And if you go over on the right hand side of the carpet though, you'll see what I have to splice, I have very little room to work. So first off, it's in a hole, so I can't use my trimmer and crimper down here. I'd have to use alternative tools. And, you know, it's not that bad. If you use vice grips, that works pretty well. You can crimp wires off actually pretty darn well with that. Sometimes a lot better if you need a really firm bite into it to make sure the wire will hold. So if this oxygen sensor doesn't work, I'm not really worried, because at least... I'll have the factory style wiring, two white, a gray, and a black. So I'll have something to work off of. Even if over here I have two black, a white, and a blue. Anyway, I'll be able to figure it out. Just see where the power is coming from because for the heater circuit. And if you figure out those two, uh, you'll pretty much be good because the other two are going to just carry the signal that the oxygen sensor produces. Okay, so oxygen sensors uh, that are upstream, which I've already talked about, they have to go up and down. Stoichiometric uh, is 14.7 to 1, and that's right in the middle range, 450 millivolts. And they go up and down to keep your catalytic converter happy, because it does have to have enough fuel to burn, or this sensor says things aren't rich enough. That's a typical situation. My car is no longer stock. Uh, when I replaced my catalytic converter, I went bigger. And while that does not throw me a P0420 most of the time, uh, early on I had some exhaust leaks, I think that was the problem, I pretty much run lean on the catalytic converter. I guess it doesn't have enough fuel to cook it. But honestly and truly, inlet and outlet of this arc the, of the catalytic converter I got underneath this car, it looks the same as the original. It's just the in and out pipe are wider, so it doesn't have that bottleneck. And that matches up with my cat back exhaust. Uh, this guy, though, he should see something steady. He shouldn't be seeing the up and down. Okay? As long as he sees that, this PCN will believe everything's stock enough that I'll pass my emissions test. Well, other than one other problem for another video. This is a perfect example of how uh, engine code could potentially throw you off. A P0141 indicates that there's a problem with the heater circuit. In this case, the problem with the heater circuit is that it's not hooked up at all. Okay, I'm sure my old O2 sensor is fine. I only bought this because it was a really cheap way to get this wiring. I can leave this hole if it happens to work great. If not, I will chop and splice. 
you know, it was just the easiest way to get this uh, this little guy right here to make it all work. So I'm going to jack up the car. I'm going to get this put in. If everything works great, if it doesn't, who cares? I can still put together my dash because I can work on everything from underneath after this. Well, the whole premise of my shot being spooly you set up in front of the car was awfully silly. I can't even get to the O2 sensor from there, not reasonably with how little I lifted the car. I only lifted it on one side. So as always, when you're using a hydraulic jack or even one that's manual that comes out of the back of your car that you twist with a nut, do not be under the car without also a stand for safety and having the wheels blocked off. That wood is just there for sure. My car is parked against a, a lip of an embankment. It's not going anywhere in that direction. I hinted at it before, but uh, now you'll have no reason to dislike Eric the Car Guy's welds. Because <laughs> here's my crapping welding work. I didn't weld that O2 sensor bung in. That was done nine or ten years ago. Heck, probably even longer than that now. Uh, by the professional shop who gave me a cat back exhaust. And all the crappy welds after that or in front of it, those are all me. I just like Eric the Car Guy's welds. Because <laughs> here's my crapping welding work. I didn't weld that O2 sensor bung in. That was done nine or ten years ago. Heck, probably even longer than that now. Uh, by the professional shop who gave me a... Had a little difficulty finding the right angle to get this done. Mostly because I lifted the car so very little. It would have helped if I used my O2 sensor removal tool at a 90 degree angle. Uh, kind of like at that angle right there. Uh, when it's hanging down. I didn't have to put my tool into it at, a, at 180 degrees along with the tool. I could have done 90 degrees off of it. I think that would have given me more options. Um, you want to use a breaker bar. I, I prefer the half inch ones. 3 8 is kind of alive. had those break on me when I really had to put a lot of force. Your backup tools for this should be an impact driver, uh, some PB blaster, or some other kind of pendant spray. Remember, sometimes shock is the key, so the impact driver with its tiny little air hammers works very well, but if you don't have one of those, you could also use a regular hammer. You also want a half inch to three eighths inch adapter to bridge that gap between the breaker bar and the standard O2 sensor removal tool. Right here I went to go grab a regular three eighths drive socket, uh, just because it's more convenient in a small amount of space, and I didn't need a lot of force once I had it broken free. Before you go much farther I recommend that you've already disconnected the O2 sensor from the wiring harness because it's going to get twisted up. Granted I still twisted up even though I had it disconnected up top but it, I hadn't pulled the little uh, sensor bung that allows it to uh, have a watertight sill just above the catalytic okay. converter that goes into the compartment. So, it's about to get tangled up. I don't recommend the O2 sensor removal tool that completely can't see it from this angle, but it looks like I've been hit underneath here, perhaps by some bump designed to make you drive slow, and I might end up with an exhaust leak. You can see here that this is definitely the original Denso plug from 180,000 miles ago. Worn, but probably still working except for that ripped out wiring. Now this aftermarket one is rather terrible that you're about to see. It just has little slits in it instead of the continual holes that you would expect from a Denso on a nice cylinder shape especially upstream O2 sensors, you want as close as possible to original. I suppose I may be able to get away with this because it's just monitoring catalytic converter uh, activity. 
At least it's nicely covered with aniseeds already, so I don't have to bother to get out my bottle. That's nice. Editing this has saved me. I think I forgot to use a wrench to actually tighten that on. Now the body of my catalytic converter truly is identical to stock. The dimensions are nearly identical. It's just the inlet and outlet were larger. I thought that might help. And truth to be told, if, if you looked and connected into any of my articles from before, this catalytic converter did give me a bump of about 50% more horsepower. If you already have it disconnected from the wiring harness up top, it's pretty easy just to pull it out. But if it's not, use some silicone spray and you'll get it pulled out. And now when you go to push the new one in, you'll have to be sure to get that uh, rubber grommet pushed through, kind of squeeze it between your fingertips until it's small enough to fit through the hole. And then pull it back until it sits on that nice sill so that you don't... Uh, find yourself with any crud coming up out of the road into those sensitive areas in your PCM on your dash or transversely uh, you don't I guess stuff can fall on the road who cares <laughs> but don't worry about that catalytic converter with that two and a half inch ender diameter uh, coming down and connecting it to a two and a quarter pipe. I did have to put an adapter in between and also another true two and a half inch pipe to fit in between the adapter and the catalytic converter. So there's really three pieces of metal or maybe even four pieces of metal getting all welded together. I tell you guys, this there. new camera is wonderful. Still got my water decarbonization bottle ready to go. So underneath the carpet here, you've got, ooh, I didn't know this. Just found out the carpet screwed in too. So yeah, you'll never get the carpet away to get into here without taking apart all this dash. Anyway, hopefully I can find where the nuts I dropped down in that area. But you've got this piece of plastic here. If you pry that up, I had to be very forceful. You can get to the wiring that gets everything to go together. Okay. Trying to pry my way back. I'm using my. There we go. Right there. Holes right here. Got it up. Got it up. Look at the puzzle pieces. Snaps right together. That was worth a week or two wait before I could finish this video, right? <laughs> now the trick is, the true trick is if this is way up here, that's great. But then I'd have to take apart the dash if I ever have to work with this again. And I may have to because this is so cheap I might be splicing those wires. Okay. I even have to be careful because the original wiring is either spliced or the fact that I ha don't have the original engine means they really really went nuts making sure they traded everything out hey it worked for a long time but that splice oh it looks raw and those wiring colors oh, I had no idea what to do if I were to try to splice from higher up better just leave everything working the way I know it works Tuck that right in there. I think I'll have access from below. Now I should be able to put the dash together. <laughs>